The South Congress podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Hey, man, thanks for uh, helping us talk about the show. I like your posters behind you. Thank you so much. Um, really quickly, um, so I write for The Ringer, but for the last 10 years before that, I wrote and podcasted for Pro Wrestling Torch. So Wade's one of my mentors. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. And on top of that, um, I grew up in San Antonio. So 20 years ago, I used to get super jealous that my friend Beth Taylor used to get to hang out on your property on the weekends and come tell me about it on Monday. So yeah, small world. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. And I miss San Antonio. I'm out here in Nevada now, mm-hmm. uh, and I love it. But man, San Antonio was my stomping ground. That's good. That's a good city. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. So um, I want to talk about the show, um, but I'm going to circle around to a few things. And what I'm really going to talk to you about is chemistry, um, not the actual uh, class, but but you'll see where I'm going with it, hopefully. Um, so first, um, I'm watching Stone Cold Steve Austin bowl with seniors and bartend and race and sand dudes and hunt ghosts. When somebody is a known for doing one thing for a very long time, and then starts doing all types of other things. We call those the side missions. Why is now the right time for Steve Austin to do the side missions? Well, because I'm not doing those things that I specialized in so many years ago. The opportunity presented itself. I got a phone call from a former colleague that I've worked with on several shows. And she said, hey, do you want to do something? And I said, yeah. And I said, what are you, what are you thinking? She goes, let me think about it. And so her and her producing partner kind of uh, – come up with, hey, man, why, why don't we go do a lot of the things that you always wanted to do but but haven't done, like a bucket list, so to speak. And I said, I love it. And so we pitched it around and then ended up at A&E. And, man, those people are great. They had their ideas of a show as well. But so you got to combine ideas. So there's fish out of water stuff. or stuff that's right up my alley. But the time was now because the opportunity was now. And, man, I'm not that guy anymore. I, I did 38. You know, uh, a couple couple last year with Kevin Owens, WrestleMania 38. And, man, I had no timing, hadn't thrown a punch, hadn't worked in 19 years. I went out there and did it. And, man, that's a young person's job. So this was the, this opportunity where the opportunity presented itself, and I love to entertain. So, you know, you're not seeing the, – the show's called Stone Cold Takes on America, but I ain't being Stone Cold. I'm being Steve. So hopefully people enjoy me being Steve and – uh, it took me a while, Cam, to kind of find who and what I was in this show because it's a little bit of an identity complex, man, because I'm not being stone cold and I, I'm I'm a different guy, Steve Austin. All my friends that – I live in a small town in Nevada, and we don't talk about what I used to do. We talk about the here and now. So I don't I don't relive those days, and I don't I don't walk in there and say, hey, if, if I'm going to drink a Broken Skull IPA, give me a hell yeah. Yeah. I go in there very quietly and go get my beer and sit down and shoot the breeze with my buddy. So it was a, you know, a, a different avenue for me, uh, turned down a little bit for me. I don't know. See, as the season progresses, I think it gets better because I find myself. And so we'll see how the chips fall as the show comes to, you know, in seven more episodes or close. When you were getting into wrestling, of course, you're working – all jobs, physical labor, like to support yourself at that time. But now, way, way down the road, Steve Austin is taking orders at the fast food joint. What is that like? Like, and not, you know, you've done the volunteer stuff, you've done the charity stuff, but actually getting to talk to somebody and serving them their food and taking those orders. As somebody who did, like, I used to work at SeaWorld in San Antonio way back. So I'm used to that, but that's way out of your wheelhouse. So what's that like being on? That side of the microphone, I guess. Well, it was nerve wracking because on one hand, I could have went in there and played it up for the humor. You know, if someone was taking order and said a cheeseburger, what? A cheeseburger, <laughs> what? I mean, I could have done that, but I was just trying to do a job, you know, uh, to uh, uh, a satisfaction level that would be worthy of a, a good employee trying to learn the system. And so maybe I missed a few moments there with that. But that was in that process of where I was trying to find myself and like, hey, man, what is this? What is the show? When I'm doing these fish out of water moments, I was nervous, you know, trying to work that thing and hit all the controls. And luckily they had that guy that was helping me out. But, you know, from then we go on to a restaurant where I'm taking orders at a steakhouse. Mm-hmm. And I got no game. I got no presentation. <laughs> I got no confidence. I don't have that 
that protective veneer that Stone Cold offered me. I'm just being Steve. So, you know, uh, and again, trying to find out what is this show. And so, again, midway through the season, I think we find our rhythm in the show. So nerve-wracking, fish-out-of-water stuff and stuff that was, you know, quite frankly, in those moments, painful for me. As somebody from around the same area, um, you know, I'm aware there's a certain Texas charm. Like I look at you and the and the lady uh, doing the ghost hunting, and you crack a joke about your uh, your third eye being closed from chair shots. I see you, you know, walk through the bar even when you're talking to the guy in the sand dune about not being comfortable going over it. There is that instant chemistry, you know, that that realism, and you know, in some ways that vulnerability. What is it about you that you think produces an instant chemistry with regular people you meet in life? Man, I don't know. I don't have any. I, I don't have any idea because uh, I just. I, I, as much as I like being alone, as much as I call myself a hermit, I, I like being around people. I like interacting with people. I like to find out, you know, who, who and what they're all about. And now, you know, all of a sudden, now here's a camera rolling. I ain't gonna let that camera freeze up. I don't want them to be nervous. I've hosted so many shows. I used to be in the podcast business, so I think I'm good at facilitating. And uh, man, what to me? What you see when you see me is what you get. I'm not a fake. I'm not a put on. It's real. So I think I just identify with people because I grew up in South Texas. I got three brothers and a sister. My mom and dad taught us to always, you know, work hard, you know, keep your head down and, and don't get the big head. So I never lost sight of that. And and I enjoy being around people. I love to BS people. I like to make them laugh. I'm not a stand-up comedian, but I can make a, a lighthearted situation out of just about anything. And my glass is always half full. I'm not a negative person at all. And you, you, when you know you're being filmed, you need that positive energy. And so even though you might be uncomfortable in the situation, you need to make it the best you can and make, make the people that you're working with uh, good as well. So I, I don't know. I don't I guess I'm not sitting there trying to blow smoke, blow smoke up my ass. But I mean, I'm just trying to do the best I can. And I get along with people. Bottom line. Absolutely. OK, so speaking of getting along. You know, people talk to you all the time about rock and steamboat and Brett. Who's somebody you didn't expect to have really good chemistry with and it just really came through in like a match or a promo or a few? Man, there's, I, I can't. Uh, that, that's a hard question to answer because, man, you just expect to have good chem chemistry with, with everybody that you do business with because mm -hmm. it's, you know, man, I, when I started in Dallas, Texas, I was still driving a forklift. And then two months later, after starting, you know, the, you know, getting the crap beat out of me, they shipped me to Tennessee to start working. And, uh, man, you got on that circuit. And when you're making 15 and $20 a night and you're driving 400 mile round trips and you literally are starving, you, you better learn how to draw money because if you're not really drawing money, you ain't going to make it. So your life depends on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you look to have chemistry with with anybody, and how how do you make things work? How do you make all the things connect? And so, I think paying paying my dues and me starving mm -hmm. had a lot to do with that. Where you look for chemistry with anybody you work with, hey, if they do something completely different than you, go with it and make it better. Yeah, Danny Trejo told me told me once that there are no bad movies because everybody gets paid, so it has to be a good movie. And I was like, I get it; it makes sense. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Um, OK, so on the flip side, and, and certainly not to bring anybody down, um, was there ever anybody you just didn't have great chemistry with that you expected to? I think uh, I think Undertaker and I had uh, a hard time really connecting in the ring. Like, I thought our gimmicks were so, not his, you know, the phenom. I was still cold, but black gear, Taker was wearing a lot of black gear, two tough guys. When Taker was a baby face, he wasn't a sympathy baby face. He was a respect baby face. When Stone Cold was a baby face, I wasn't a sympathy baby face. I was a respect baby face, and, and you expected me to kick ass. So I always found it hard for as much as I sold for him or he sold for me. You know, the fact that there were just these, these two guys that, uh, of the DNA that they were made of, for some reason, I thought, 
and, and Mark and I had some had some good matches. I got knocked out in the, the Madison Square Garden match, which was we were going to be on our way to a damn good match on that one, and I got knocked out and don't remember the rest of it. But we had a hard time connecting. And I remember I first started working with Mark when he was coming in. I think it was the Punisher, and I was just Steve Williams. And he tried to call a couple things to make me look good there on a t- TV match, and I couldn't hear him. And I kept saying, what? 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 This is before I invented what? Because yeah. I couldn't hear the call. And so he just had to start chopping me down. But I love Mark. But I think if you ask him the, the same question, I think uh, talent-wise, we're both – I was as good as I was, and he's amazing, okay? One of the best to ever do it. We had a hard time connecting to really tell the stories we wanted to tell. I thought his best opponents were guys, guys like Hitman, Sean, McFoley, uh, other guys, and I, and I don't know why that is. As good as I was and as great as he is or he was, I thought we should have done better in the ring. Absolutely. Okay. So the best chemistry you had outside of actually in the ring was probably with Kurt Angle. Um, some of the funniest stuff that's ever been produced, like on WWE TV. What made that work? Where did you guys' chemistry come from? And, and just... I'm imagining you trying to keep a straight face through a lot of that stuff. What really went into all that? Man, only one time when I was singing to him uh, on that guitar, I actually busted and we broke the tank and busted character and we had to redo that one. But most of those done, and you can ask Kurt, most of those were one, two take deals at the most. Most of them were one take deals where I'd come up with these ideas and it was just an ad lib and Kurt is so talented he would just go back and forth with me. And he had that hokiness about him, along with that shoot aspect of being in a 96 yeah. Olympic gold medalist. He was he was one of those shoot guys that had a, the ability to drop the ego out of it and just, just play upon his strengths, which was sometimes being aloof or just saying stuff. He has great comedic timing. He's very articulate, very eloquent. He can memorize anything at the drop of a hat, but this was improvisation. And so I just think it speaks to our skills of of just being able to do what we did and then putting those two skills together and feeding off of each other and trusting each other and just letting it fly. And and Kurt is one of the best. I've never seen anybody pick up the business of professional wrestling faster than Kurt Angle. In all my years of watching, no one even comes close. And he was just as great on a promo. And he was a wonderful heel and a, and a wonderful person to work against. So I give him a lot of that credit. Okay. Just a couple more things. I'm Again, I, I don't want to make you answer stuff that I know you've had to in depth, but just with guys like Steamboat, with Brett, with Rock, what are some of the keys to having great chemistry? Man, I, that's a hard question to answer. Is, is just you, for some reason, they're on the, the same page as you in an opposite fashion, because if you're doing this, they have to do, you know, the the, the part that, it, that, that, that the other part of that gear and working with Steamboat, man, if I grabbed a headlock on Steamboat, Steamboat would, would you know, I would work the headlock, but he'd, he'd, he'd top wrist out of it. He, I didn't have to tell him to do that. He would just do that. Steamboat would do Steamboat stuff. Mm-hmm. The Rock did electrical stuff. You know, he was the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. For some reason, the hunger that he had and the, the, the passion that I had, I mean, when we got together, I brought out the best in him and he brought out the best in me. And it was both about two cats being trying to be number one, but not being, not trying to be number one by one upping each other, but by working together to make each other uh, the, the biggest and best. So, I don't know. You just find that groove. It's, it's kind of like talking with people. Sometimes you find like you ever get on the phone and maybe it's a connection or something like that, but you, you step on each other and right when they're tailing off, you're trying to jump in and then they continue. And it's like, I'll, I'll go in there and talk to my wife. And I'm like, man, have you ever talked to so-and-so on the phone? It's weird. That's, that's kind of like, you know, you're doing that in the ring. That's why I'm just nodding right now, by the way. So yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but I don't know. Chemistry is chemistry. For some reason, I wish I could give you a better answer than I've tried to give you. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. Um, I remember uh, you were doing a pod with Raven and you guys were talking about Elix Skipper. And he was talking about how Skipper was telling him about new moves he was coming up with. 
And on the flip side, you and Raven were like, oh, the moves are great, but it's got to be the personality. Like, that's what has to come through. And I think like you and Rock, you know, both growing up athletes, big, strong guys, like clashed in a certain way. You and Steamboat being able to just go athlete back and forth a certain way. Then you and Brett being so physical. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's all there. It's all there. They, you're, Steve, you're good. Don't worry. They pay me to write the words. You're perfect. We're going to make it happen. Um, so let me ask you. So most recently, like you talked about coming in off the street, like you're basically out of the game 19 years and you and Kevin Owens get in there and there's immediate chemistry. Um, what made that work so good? I'm sure you were critical of yourself, but from what we saw, it was amazing. So, so what made that work so well, chemistry wise? Well, because I met Kevin Owens, shit, uh, 25 years ago at an airport going through Canada. I was on fire at the time. He was just getting into business. He was traveling with El Generico, Sami Zayn. And, uh, you know, he's telling about all these moves, this, that, or whatever. He asked me, I said, he goes, you got any advice for me? And I said, dude, I said, you need to stop worrying about all those fancy moves. And I said, you need to learn how to cut a promo. You need to learn how to run your mouth. And he took that to heart and he did. So I've been a fan of his because I had him on, I had him on my podcast many years ago when I was in the podcast business. And he's, a, he's an amazing kid. And so is Sammy Zane as well. Students of the game, grew up loving the game got in it, paid all the dues, uh, learned uh, many different styles, uh, had to survive, depend on each other, depend on themselves. So he, he, we, I think we come from a like mind, like-mindedness and similar backgrounds. And he's just a worker's worker. And I've always respected him. And I didn't know how good he was. And I knew he was good, but I didn't know how good he was until I actually got in a ring with him. So I just think it's, you know, a mutual respect for each other and instant chemistry just because, man, I wouldn't have let this kid down. And it was like, you know, two peas in a pod or peanut butter and jelly. You know, that that's the way it was. And, and for what reason, I have no idea because it could have been awkward mm -hmm. because maybe things shouldn't have lined up, but they did. And I just think it's because he's a pro. I was a pro. Uh, in, in that moment, we shined. Absolutely. Steve, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for all the years of entertainment. Um, the show is very, very fun. I'm glad you're getting to be Steve after all these years. I'm glad I'm getting a chance to be Steve, too. Uh, again, I think I find my way a little bit here as a few of the episodes, uh, you know, progress. Uh, this next episode, uh, I'm doing some cooking along with some other things. Of it. I learned some uh, good things in the cooking, and me and the crew go in that, in that RV, and we cook up, and it, that's a, that's a freaking blast. So, the ep the episodes improve as I continue to find myself, and it's it's I, I love talking about wrestling stories. If somebody asks me, but I've answered so many wrestling questions for so many years. It's nice to talk about something new through the through the the, the activities in this show. I started uh, racing uh, side by sides, you know, four wheel buggies mm -hmm. uh, with this uh, racing the the Valley Off Road Racing Association out here. So I'm entering my second race in a couple of weeks. And I got three or four more races out uh, after that. But it's, it's nice to, to talk about new things. And I, and I love I, I love my wrestling career. But I don't hang out with my buddies and talk about what I did 20 years ago. I just Absolutely. don't. So it's nice to be able to talk about fresh things. Absolutely. Next time, we'll just talk about camouflage hats. You can probably do that for like an hour. Have a good we talk did. about Academy. <laughs> Dude, we, could, we, we could talk about camouflage because, man, I've been rocking camouflage. I was doing camo when camo wasn't cool. People now do it for a, for a fashion statement. It was a way of life for me, and it still is. I'll make sure you don't get to see my closet, Steve. But um, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. It's really appreciated. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. You take care of yourself. I will. You too.